All right, let's dive into this topic. I uh, I was going to do it, and then I decided not because I lost a, a ton of different examples. I had them pulled up in an editor, and then when we lost power through the storm, I had eight of them or nine of them saved, and the others, it was, uh, it, you know, it was to trim them so that way it was the exact sample I needed. Long story short, apparently right in the middle of the power outage, uh, I wasn't able to bring up my history on my editor and find them again. And uh, I was going to go back and pull them together and do this video like next week or sometime. But we're just going to do it anyway because I think there's enough here. Besides, um, I'm seeing a repeat of similar names on social media. And I, I think it, for this case and similar cases, I think there's a – and I would like to open this up. We're going to hone in on the Carol you know, situation right now. But I think this fits for – all fandoms, and I do think it is a a small portion of the fandoms uh, that give the 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 fandom a bad name, and that goes for everyone. I see Star Wars fans say we have the worst fans ever, and they highlight some of the bad apples and some of the minority of the fans. Because if you just look at it, at all the fans, if you're focusing on just like a Twitter thread or just a this or just a that, you might see that and say that's the majority, excuse me, but I don't think that's the case. I'm scrolling through a lot of it to try to get a, a, an unbiased feel, not just on one platform, but multiple. Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and interactions in real life. Real life interactions are so freaking different uh, because there's a lot less negativity, honest uh, opinions, and acceptance. It's unreal. On the internet, I think it's easier to just uh, tribalize it. You know what I mean? Form in your own little cliques and then stick hard and stubborn with that. But when it comes to anything, Star Wars, The Walking Dead, the DC Universe uh, comic, you know, the shows, uh, the movies, Marvel, and yada, 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 you're always going to find that portion of the fan base that is uh, vicious, negative, they attack, they name call. And here's just one example. And again, I think this holds through, uh, holds true throughout multiple different fan bases and I do want to clarify that I think the majority of fans just want to be entertained and have something to love you know what I'm saying F franchises and is is a bit different it's not like a one-off entertained from this movie Parasite was a foreign film that recently won like best picture that's a one-off where you go to the movie and it's like oh boom watch them turn that into a sequel I haven't seen it yet I'm about to but anyway for an example, that's a one-off. You go and you either, either enjoy it or you don't. Other uh, franchises, it's a bit different because you know you're enjoying it and there's a future to come out of it. Characters, uh, storylines, uh, characters connected to characters, and yada, yada, yada. So recently I've been seeing more anger within the, the Carol fan base, which caught me off guard because uh, I didn't know it was as vicious. And uh, my opinion for Carol is uh, twofold. First off, the actress, uh, Melissa McBride, I've said for years, is just absolutely powerful. Her range and her ability as an actor, and it's not just The Walking Dead, but uh, going as far back as, as The Mist, she had a really small role, and she killed it, especially in one crucial moment. And the casting was perfect because... Without spoiling that moment, if you haven't seen the old movie Mist, not the new TV show, or newish, um, go and see it. Because just that one moment where she's asking for help, it's like, it's crushing. And a lot of people are in that. Carol's in it. Andrea's in it. Dale's in it. <laughs> Wait, is Dale in it? Yeah, Dale's in it. No, he's not in it. No, he's in something else that Frank Darabont did, I think. He might be in it. No. The Tank Soldier's in it. The guy from uh, Deacon from Days Gone. I'm getting off track. Anyhow, so to catch you up with what's going on with Carol, there's a portion of the fan base that are hardcore Carol fans. And this is broken into uh, another portion, but the main aspect is Carol's my favorite character. I love her and she could do no wrong. And it's simple and it's harmless. Number one, huge Carol fans. And again, it's harmless. She's my favorite. She could do no wrong. All right. It's biased, but it's it's harmless, you know? We all have our favorites. 
Now, then broken off from that is an even smaller click that take it to an extreme that uh, if you even think about saying, what is Carol doing? And I've noticed this. I've gotten blasted by just doing a review, praising Melissa McBride, praising Carol. And then I'll say one little thing like, yeah, I don't know. She's being a little ridiculous. This is a little over the top. Well, what is she doing? You know what I mean? Character wise, like her decision and fans would just go nuts. You racist piece of shit. I've never heard you say that about a guy. You sexist, you know, yada, yada, yada. And again, it's so small. It's like the one or two, three different comments. And you're just like, okay, whatever. And you keep it moving. Cause it's not that big of a deal. Um, here on Twitter, we had uh, uh, Julian, a member of the Matt family, did a, a review, and he's doing what fans do online. You poke, you prod, you leave a few messages, yada, yada, yada. Even his first interaction, he said, on here, he said, uh, me, when I see everyone telling me that Carol does not deserve the blame, their minds will change when they when the episode airs, and this is for the coming episode, and it's, it's what you do on the internet, little tease or whatever, and that's part of the fun when you're going back and forth with fans. Whether you agree or disagree, a lot of fans like to be playful, and you see this with the very first interaction he has, right? You have this girl say, uh, I don't even have the time to tell you how wrong you are. Harmless, playful. And then he comes back with, you'll see, laugh out loud after watching 1009 already. Um, oh, he watched it already. Your mind will change. And then she's like, come on, you know how stubborn I am. Just laughing, crying face. And he does a gif. And then she does a gif. And then again, they she finishes with, I just read this. Oh, wait, no, that's someone else. But I'm sorry. She finishes with me and you are in a stare off until season 11 like this. That's the majority of fans in disagreement. <laughs> clearly just jabbing at each other harmless that's how the majority of it is to tell it should be all right you got um uh, the screen here saying i read the spoilers i'm not worried and then she gets a little more frustrated but okay whatever it is what it is you go down even further and you start seeing others uh here's someone saying i think it's possible to see that carol's making bad choices but still love her okay there we go solid and then here's this person out of the blue with some crazy nonsense but they are men. They're always kissed in ass for everything they do, especially by do bro reviewers. <laughs> okay, that was out of nowhere and crazy. But uh, someone says, uh, y'all been blaming Rick for everything. Nice to see the heat on someone actually deserving of it. So here we see a little frustration. Fans are like clapping back. Uh, the person comes back and say, so you're going to blame Daryl too after episode 10? Because if not... It means you're sexist. Now, this is some of the most ridiculous argument and points to make. Um, blame man or you're sexist or you're racist or whatever it is. It always gets thrown out there. And we've seen this in uh, the thread. And it seems like it's a lot of the similar people. I see a, a few of the same names popping up. Another person here says... Uh, Nothing she does in uh, nine is worse than what Rick, Daryl, and Rosita, etc., have done in previous seasons. And I'll let you know right now, uh, Rick has been criticized in season two. He was destroyed. I remember the online fan base at that time at that time was almost to the point of saying, "Yeah, Shane's nuts. He's losing his shit a little bit." But man, you know what? Rick is getting on our nerves. And I remember this because I was a hardcore Rick fan. Even back then, I was like, nah, just wait and see. I know my boy Rick's going to pull through. He ain't perfect. And speaking about perfect characters, Spin Spin uh, 2020 is a mod on the channel. She's a nut Carol fan. Nut case, hardcore Carol fanatic, right? So I hit her up and said, yo, we're doing a Carol story. This is kind of what it is, you know, what it is about. She gave me her an opinions and the first thing she says is pretty much where i stand where uh yeah love the character queen ride or die but characters have flaws and that's what a lot of people find interesting and that's what she finds interesting and that's where i rest characters with flaws even recognizing it even saying this anything is their fault it's so weird how it gets distorted into all these other characters. Like Daryl, he got hate when Glenn died. Rightfully so, in my opinion, he got Glenn killed. And I know people snap back, oh, it was Negan, yada, yada. Okay, fine. You know, it was Negan's fault, but uh, it was still Daryl's fault, in my opinion. Do I hate Daryl? Do I hate the actor? Do I yada, yada, yada? No. I think we, we made it a joke for like a week. 
and we forgot about it. Same thing with Carol here. And no, it's not excusing to say, oh, well, she's in pain, she's in grief. So even if I agree she did a mistake, it, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Well, I mean, yeah, it does, <laughs> you know? And again, it's not even a big deal. It's who cares? Uh, character, uh, yeah, she was in grief and she rushed in and blah, yada, yada, yada. And other characters, when they did that, Michonne, for example, Rosita even, Rosita got flamed for shooting Negan with the bat or I forget like uh, specifically at, at what point, but we flamed Rosita for that. We flamed Daryl for that on this channel specifically. Rick got flamed, even though he's my favorite. There's times where he got flamed for certain decisions. Uh, Daryl, Rosita, and uh, just the one example of... of, of Rick not uh, immediately, and I think this was a writing choice that was poor, not immediately wanting to go to war with the saviors, but do it on the down low from the beginning was a poor choice, and they only did it to stall it out until that mid-season finale where they came together and it's hoorah, now I'm ready, now I'm ready to listen. That was an absolute mistake, and I feel like it drug the fan base down into this negative, you know, void. Anyhow. So this person goes on, if her plan was successful, everyone would praise her. Also, no, Carol doesn't deserve the blame for everyone ending up in that cave. And again, this is arguing some different semantics. Uh, I even criticized the cave part. It's stupid. No matter how you cut it, they all fell in the, in the hole, whatever. And this person, I think this is the same name we see coming up with some really off-the-wall takes. Men always ignore other men's issues. That's how dude bro, stupid gang exist and spread toxic, toxicity against women. Women are not allowed to do what men are allowed. Women never get recognition for good things, but always get blame. The Walking Dead reviewers are a great example of ugly society. Um, she's off the wall here. And again, mainly off the wall because it's a blanket statement. You can have some truths in there for uh, maybe this reviewer or that person or this fan, but a whole blanket statement, you're off the mark like wildly. Uh, this person comes back. I think you've got to stop freaking out over a couple of things she's done. Reviewers have a right to their opinion, yada, yada, yada. Maybe you're right, but I can still criticize in regards to some experience of being in fandom. I agree that reviewers have the right of their opinion, but our difference between having an opinion or spreading hate and targeting because of your biased agenda, let's wait and see. Now, spreading hate and targetist by a biased agenda is simply being like, yo, me, uh, me, when I see everyone telling me Carol doesn't deserve the blame. I mean, uh, you can say that's, uh, uh, you know, edged in there or something, but as far as, um, spreading hate or an agenda, it's like, bro, really? <laughs> I mean, that's like a soft little jab. It, that's a good way to put it. Jabs aren't spreading hate. Jabs aren't getting riled up. That's in part, uh, part of the fandom. It's one of the best parts of the fandoms having those playful jabs. What else we got? I got a whole different uh, bunch. Let me roll through here with some. These are the ones or some of the ones that were actually saved. Uh, this is a uh, on a post. That's right. The Walking Dead made a post saying, do you blame Carol? This is, keep in mind, the same post they made about Carol, they did about Daryl when uh, Glenn died. The same like up close faced was, was it Daryl's fault? They milked it for like two weeks. It's staying relevant. It's staying, it's keeping something that's a hot topic on just by based on, on numbers, not even like the content of fans being like, okay, enough already blaming the character. It's simply going, well, fans are, are rushing to this. You know, they must be like, oh, this must be a hot topic. So they did it to Daryl. One day I'll find it. I will find it. Because uh, I remember making videos back in the day, and I'm almost positive I used the image, but I will find it. So they did it for Carol. I'm Daryl, but that's forgotten about, and that's like in the past. But now that we're doing it for Carol, or I'm sorry, the Walking Dead main site did it for Carol, you have here, Carol could slaughter, and this is part of the fan base just going at each other, Carol could slaughter a field of babies, and dumbasses would still defend her. And then Rosebud, yes, we would, <laughs> because she's the best character on the show, hands down. And then he says, I can't wait so she can die. And again, this is the the where some of the riffs come in, come into play. Instead of the playful jabs, you have character, you have fans that are just uh, taking it to the extreme. So just to set you up with uh, an example, 
Here's someone saying she didn't tell everyone to come with her. Uh, that's on them for not looking. She's grief stricken now that Rick is gone. The show is, has to have someone who actually does stuff and makes decisions, good or bad. They've given that to Carol. Blame her as much as uh, you'd blame Rick. And again, Rick has gotten blame. Uh, this person does say Rick always had a strategy. And again, this is his opinion, how he views it. So let's see what he says. Sometimes it did not work, but he tried to always have a plan and did not get his group in trouble. He had to stay back and do exactly what Negan told him for a while until he came up with a plan okay now look there's a lot there that rick was very strategic it's part of his character now carol has shown times where she can be uh strategic she's also been emotional rick has shown times where he was emotional as well remember right after uh was it abraham or glenn i think it was after glenn rick was like i'll kill you that was emotional maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but I will kill you. You're already dead. It's some shit like that. That was an emotional response. Response. He didn't have a plan. He didn't have a strategy. And uh, luckily, in that you know situation and, and position, he didn't get anyone else killed. Uh, you can look at it like that. I don't think anyone pointed it out as a flaw. But sure, Rick had. If I'm thinking back, when it comes to them two, it would be unrealistic for Carol to be strategic from the gate. All right, she had a huge character development. So I think it's fair to say that, sure, for the most uh, part, Rick had more strategy behind his things, but that is simply defaulted due to the character types. Every character can't be that. Now, uh, um, they do both deserve to soak in any of the blame that the fandoms have without it being hate. Again, blame isn't hate. Now, this person goes on to say, that's misogyny. Oh, wow. <laughs> I forgot this is one of those ones. That's misogyny and you're laughable. Rick didn't have a strategy always. You just want to hate her. Yeah, again, see, it's a silly response instead of going back and forth. The one person did leave out. Rick didn't always have a, a strategy, but, you know, for the most part, you could say he was trying to have a strategy and that's part of his character. This person says, does anyone remember this account asking us, us if we blame Rick for any of his actions? Uh, they did it for Daryl though. And I know that for a fact, uh, other ones, Rick, I'm sure they did asking for those of us who support leaders who happen to be women. Um, okay. You know what? Now we're leaning again. It's sexist. Here's someone saying the exact, exactly same reaction when Maggie saw Daryl punch Negan. Believe Daryl is my number one, but you guys are pushing this so hard. Not even when Glenn got killed, you did that. Again, that's wrong. Uh, wait, what is this? Oh, this is another one. This is a misogyny gif. Uh, I just didn't save it when it had that misogyny on there. Now, um, again, that's not true. They did that. And I guess that would be gaslighting. They ran, is it Daryl's fault for like a week? Some of y'all who have the mo the time and ability to go back and, and get that evidence, if you want to throw a leak in the comment box, they did that and they milked it for a minute because I, I covered The Walking Dead at that time and it was a deal. You know, fans were like going at it. Someone says, I'm, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm tired. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask you what every Carol fan is thinking. Why do you guys hate Carol? And again, here's a, a Walking Dead site, keeping conversation going, keeping things relevant, putting up something that is relevant. It's not a stretch. It's clearly there to show a flaw within a character, a character flaw, which is which makes characters better. You know what I'm saying? It makes them more complex and more interesting. Now, I know some fans with blinders on will say, Oh, yeah, it's a flaw, but it, it's okay. It doesn't count. Don't call it a flaw. Um, but for some reason, they see that as negative and they, you can't have anything negative with, with Carol. But um, that's what writers are doing, though. They're looking at Carol being absorbed by her grief as a character flaw. That's what writers are doing. That's why it's in there. And that's why it is like this. So it's not a stretch. And it makes sense why the, the, um, they're putting this up there for the fan interaction. Why do you guys hate Carol? So doing a simple post of having, uh, I think it's a really cool looking image of Carol looking up or something from like the caves. And it was like, just, do you blame Carol? Like, let's ask, let's open it up. It wasn't saying we blame Carol. 
Just give me one minute, sweetie. It doesn't say, uh, do you blame Carol or yada, yada, yada. Just one innocent post to get uh, reactions. And then it says, why do you guys hate Carol? Like, sometime it is like someone takes over your account just to create flames around her character. And again, it's not her character. They do it for almost everyone. Like you bless some characters, and I'll prove, I'll show you one thing that's funny in a second. Some characters and put down others, and no, not blaming character. Carol. Again, they do it for everyone. And then this girl says, it'll actually be like three minutes. Uh, they're, they're Donnie ass lickers, and you'll see how they're going to create hell of those shippers later. Uh, they're so predictable, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, they're so funny. I'm not sure w w where they're going with that. Um, uh, no, of course not. Would you blame Negan and Daryl or Rick for all those things they have done? Again, all of them got blame. All of them. You wouldn't, but you seem to want to hang on Carol, at Carol out to dry. They did it for those characters. They do it for them all, you know? Negan deserves to get hate. Rick um, will call them out on his shit, too. Carol, the first time getting hated by the Phantom is actually acceptable because she deserves it for one stop being biased and admit she's gone nuts. I wouldn't go that far. She's being soaked up um, by the uh, grief. Um, oh, and Daryl getting the heat since season six, seven, eight. I mean, he deserved it. And that's another thing. Daryl wasn't just getting um, hate for the Glenn moment. He got heat for a minute. He got heat for mumbling. Daryl got flamed for mumbling, <laughs> you know, for changing the way the character talked. He got flamed for that. Oh, I just thought of a, another perfect exa example of, uh, um, damn, I'm going to have to try to remember that. I just thought of another perfect example to go along with it. Here's uh, nothing like misogyny. Why do male, male characters get a pass? They don't. They haven't. This is Twitter insanity. Okay. Asking if a character who's a flawed character who soaked up by grief, it, whip blinders on, you know, goes after something, uh, puts people in danger, 1000% objectively done that and did that. And in a way, the show didn't even capitalize on the biggest way she put everyone at risk. It was breezed over because the writers weren't interested in going in that direction. Uh, but this person jumps, nothing like misogyny. What are you people mental now? Keep in mind the, the, the way I'm talking about is Carol and alpha meeting face to face. This is something that should have been big, but because they wanted the Dante thing and the other thing and this thing, and they had that interaction with alpha at the, the border scene, they had alpha just go, yeah, mother to mother. I'll cut you some slack. So again, because the writers had their focus on a different part of the, st of the story, this part that was um, one hell of a dangerous risk to the entire community. And you can't say grief. You cannot use that as an excuse. Why? Because there's other parents and siblings at those communities. So it's, it's a terrible thing for Carol to lose her adopted son over the last few years. I know it still stings too, but I'm trying to make a point. It's okay for her to be blinded by grief and put other people who have kids and families in danger, multiple dozens, you know, uh, let's see, 20, 30, 40, 50 families. Again, this is something that this isn't a part of the storyline they went to, but it was, a, it was set up to be a possibility. Alpha said, you go across that border. It's a wrap. Carol did it and didn't even flinch. Now we know why. It's because they knew it didn't matter. So they can have the cool face off. So the writers really did, um, really did uh, um, leave room for them to have a cool, you know, Alpha versus uh, Carol face off uh, by simply just brushing past how massive of a threat that was. Carol, you know, um, being noticed across the border and the rest of them. But again, we got here. Hell no. I understand she's being suicidal and reckless, but no one would ever lost so much that she would act rational. Unfortunately, replies show how non-empathy, toxic, and sexist fandom t uh, towards her is. If it was Rick or Daryl, they would be praised and not blamed. Again, this is... I went for like two hours scrolling down and looking at reply after reply after reply. 95% of them are Carol and Daryl fans and... Uh, even fans that are just, you know, on the level where it's like, yeah, you know, I feel like she's soaked in with grief, but I don't blame her. Like, we're talking normal shit. And it's like, nope, 
The fandom is toxic. There's no empathy and it's sexist because there's a few fans. I haven't found one example. Maybe you can use some of the harsh like comebacks. Some of them, I think it's just frustrated fans. I haven't found one example that I can save. And if you have them out there, I believe there's some out there where a fan is um, just out with it. I think there's even some racist fans, some sexist fans, uh, some that don't have empathy and some that are toxic. I believe these all exist, but they're in such the minority, especially in ones that are, are putting themselves out there online. I can't even find an example of that. Yet the fandom has been boiled down to that because someone asked, is Carol to blame? Someone asked a question. They didn't blame her. They asked the fans for an opinion. And then here, Amanda says, uh, it's a yes for me. Actions have consequences, no matter the circumstances that led to those actions. She doesn't get a pass because she's grieving. Anyone on the show had law. Lo everyone lost people. Uh, she's being reckless and people are going to get hurt. Listen, very reasonable re response. Very reasonable opinion. R Rose here says, uh, so then it's Daryl's fault that Glenn is dead. I did reply to this one. That's my one reply down there. And I said, yes. <laughs> I said, yes, it's Daryl's fault that Glenn was dead. Yes, the fan base was going nuts back then. Where is that even coming from? <laughs> you know? Anyhow, there's only a couple more and we'll shut her down because this is a long little fandom rant showing off some examples. But uh, here's the, the Walking Dead retweeting the sexist Walking Dead uh, media group. Well, let me think. I'm almost positive the media side is two guys and a girl that I know of. Mm, I'm going to have to look into that. I know one uh, guy specifically on the media side. I, I know that. I'm trying to think. What was the. Uh, I can't think of the titles of, of the, the girl, but she was on the podcast. You guys can listen to it, but. Uh, or maybe I'm thinking of something else. But I know the one guy who's running kind of the uh, social media side. Uh, here's The Walking Dead. The sexist guy running The Walking Dead retweeted a picture of Carol two weeks before the poll, right? Asking, hey, is Carol to blame? And it said, the strongest and boldest woman I know with a heart. Yet that sexist bastard dared to retweet this. And this is just one of them. There's nonstop and consistent praise for Carol, Michonne, Connie, you name it. And that's just in the last like two months. Uh, what else? Uh, all right. So that's the end of that. Uh, but back to Julian's thing uh, to wrap this up, you will see a, a handful of them that, and you'll see misogyny crops up. If you go onto Twitter, it's simply um, believe what I believe, which is harmless stuff. It's, is Carol at fault? Yes or no? It's harmless. Believe what I believe, which is no, Carol's not at fault or you're sexist. Those people are such to the extreme. I'm convinced there's, there's some, there's something wrong there. There's just something wrong there. Um, all right. I think we covered that. And then we got, nah, it's like the walking dead characters. Don't do mistakes. Rick, Michelle, and Daryl haven't done it in the past. Just people wait from two. Yeah. Okay. People are being dramatic. Absolutely. Uh, Carol isn't perfect. She's making questionable decisions, but that's why I love her. That seems fine. I'm not sure why anyone would want perfect characters. Again, I agree with that. Who makes the right decisions because that would be boring right there. I agree with that. We have a, uh, she tries to step up and do something beating alpha when you're impossible. Yada, yada, because to out muscle and out crazy alpha, Rick, uh, moved to herd and went to hell and he got no blame. Uh, and again, that is not true. Rick got blame for attempting to move the herd. And if you're talking about season six, uh, just moving it, just instead of lighting it on fire, fans were nuts, which I thought was ridiculous because that's, do you know how much gas or flammable liquid you're going to need for that? And don't give me the whole, oh, they're dead. They're just going to whatever. Because if it's true, whatever it is in the virus preserves them to keep them lasting longer, it's not going to be the same as like the, the gases a body gives off. With It's just not going to be the same. So, and then we have, uh, make me stay off social media, not new episode, for, for tired of it. Uh, poor Carol is stuck in a wash, rinse, repeat storyline. Okay, that's the person not happy with storyline. Um, here's someone. Was it a bad move? I want to make sure if we got it covered uh, because there was a few. 
Unfortunately, there are a few okay people defend her no matter what because Carol's because Carol fans are true and loyal fans. Unlike Donnie and Rochelle and people, uh, fucking freak. Okay, and that's another thing too. The shipper community, which is part of the community I have the most flack with, only because I remember when it was Beth and Daryl. Oh my God, the amount of mental instability or un, uh, unstable people around that point in time. And I will say unstable people because these are people who came out with for months, like two to three months after it with, and I know this is such a, uh, a meme at this point when it comes to social media, but we're talking about almost consistent weekly death threats from Beth fans, all because I did not think Beth and Daryl, uh, were couple material. I thought they had a, a cool, like, um, um, uh, friend relationship, even kind of like a, a older mentor relationship. But I just didn't find anything as far as a romantic relationship. And it was unprecedented and unreal how much and for how, excuse me again, for how long they ranted on it for. We're talking about going to my about section, finding my email to email me after repeated comments either getting auto spammed because of the language they're using and YouTube is like, well, this person, <laughs> whoa, or um, me not replying because I try to reply as much as I can, but because I'm not, um, they went to look for my email to send me some messages. It got out of hand. So I already have like a, a frictious relationship when it comes to shippers only because within the shipper community, within the fandom, I think it's a small part of the community of the community that are unstable. And this is just my opinion, but I believe within the shipper communities, it's a huge part. I think it's a huge part within that community for whatever reason. They're just unstable. They go to the extreme and they snap. Now, if you take the community, I'll be fair and say half are just fans chilling, enjoying what they love. The other half are just, they need a life. They need a break. They need to step away and just get their lives in check and come back down to reality or something, you know? Um, but a lot of more thoughts and opinions here. You'll find some that will just get... Uh, you know, a little more aggressive and fans that are just going back and forth. Uh, the fandom baiting and unrelating hashtag, no click block instead, knowing that desperate is worth reading. I'm not really sure. Let me see what that is for, which is that for the Oscars. Uh, um, oh, I get it. Cause he used the Oscar hashtag for something, even though it was an Oscar picture. I, I, okay. I see what they're saying. Um, I think that's, that's that's how you use hashtags, though. So, okay. I've been saying this uh, for the entire season. She's acting crazy. So a fan thinks you're crazy. I'm curious why you use Oscars in this tweet. Yeah, I mean, that's something that a lot of people do on Twitter. I, uh, I get it. You know, it's kind of where you want to spill over into something. And there's people that do it to a gross extent. If I could just take a sidebar here for a second. Where fans of the... Um, k-pop or something will just put like a k-pop meme and they'll just flood social media with coronavirus hashtag coronavirus or oh shit you're not supposed to say that in a video now uh, if you say those words youtube demonetizes you immediately i was just informed of that today um yeah let's finish this up um uh, because I, i'm pretty sure we got them all and i already lost a lot of juicy ones where People lost their shit. And again, here's something that I've been saying for a minute. Uh, for fans that want to contribute, if you catch something, man, you could just do a collection of screenshots of uh, tweets or maybe save them or send them to me or retweet them to me and yada, yada, yada. If it's something we could build up, I don't have to do a video on it tomorrow. If it's anything for this, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, we're discussing that on my personal channel. All this stuff, if people want to help curate the information and tweets and evidence, we can pull some things together and we will be doing something like that with my uh, Discord that I'm, I'm getting set up. And then that way we can utilize the fan base. So that way I have tentacles to spread out and grab much more information. At this point, at 33 minutes, we're using this as like a podcast uh, fan discussion because I don't want to just uh, throw it away. Um, comicbook.com i just noticed it an, an article on this too walking dead fans debate if carol deserves blame for the the cave cliffhanger it doesn't get as heated though they just show some examples of uh fans that are chill a, a few fans that kind of lose it 
I would imagine. Oh, here's that image. I wanted to show you that pic. Here's. Is how long does that go on for? Thirty seconds. Oh my God. Here's that image. That is a really good picture of Carol. I wonder. Oh yeah, right here. Really cool picture of Carol. Um, they should have shared just that image. But like I was saying before, I do want to open that up, and <clears throat> I do want to uh, express my opinion about the fan bases as a whole. I truly believe that the majority of them are chill, and there's um, some people that just go to the extremes, and you find that in everything. To be honest, every fandom, every topic. Uh, every little click, you will have your tiny group, either tiny or big group, uh, that goes to the extremes in an aggressive way, a violent way, a disgusting way, an angry way, uh, you name it. And unfortunately, we'll have that probably forever. Uh, but don't let it get you down. Um, I don't know how to close this because we're not going to fix anything. So I don't even know why, but hell, maybe you guys want to put some of your war stories down in the comment box below. How do you feel? Well, war stories, but also how do you feel with the fandom? Are you, are you, when you share something, do you ever get that feeling like, oh, here we go? Because I know when I'm reviewing something, I know for a fact when it comes to certain characters and I'm going to criticize Carol's one of them. I know every time I say anything that's not praise, I know there will be at least five comments. And I think that's low enough to just whatever five comments that are just going to be like, you are a piece of shit. You know what? Mostly it's sexist because again, Carol's white, so they're not going to do the racist card. But if it was Michonne and fans were acting that way, you'd get every name in the book. Now that I said every flagged word, uh, YouTube's definitely demonetizing this. So, um, this is a topic I, I want to continue on though. So I'll end this little podcast type vid now and then um, maybe we will move forward with another discussion about fandoms because I think uh, highlighting the problem and showing how it does create friction between fans, there's some of them I'm sure that have snapped in the past. Maybe they would look at this and go, yeah, you know what? They're not hating on Carol just for asking because that's what they're there for. They're there to stir the pot and expect fans to be playful and not actually violent and belligerent. You know what I'm saying? The first little playful response is exactly what they're expecting. Fans being playful, even when it's people who disagree, it is okay. It is fine. It is even fine for someone to not like Carol. That is fine. You know what I mean? It doesn't take anything away from Carol. There's a lot of people that don't like Rick. I don't care. You know, I love Rick. Anyhow, uh, and one day we will cover the stupid decisions Rick has made because he's made a handful of them. No one's no one's getting out easy. I don't even know why you would want to live in a world where it's like, yeah, just because he's got a swing and pickle means I'm going to overlook uh, magically overlook decisions. No. Uh, uh, can you call it misandrous? What's that word where females are like, uh, it's misogynist, but it's for females? Yo, that's a hypocritical thing too. Men or, or Rick fans, Daryl fans, they're the same or the extreme fans are the same as you, not judging everything they do is perfect. I just thought of that. I should have put that in this video. You get some of these fans who are like, oh, um, Carol is queen, so she can do no wrong. And then you, and that's fine. That's okay for a female or male or anyone to say that that's okay. You're fine. You're a normal human being in their eyes. But if, if a male Daryl Stan says Daryl's perfect, he can do no wrong. You're now a misogynist. You know what I'm saying? That's a double standard. That's no, how do you not see that? If any fan of, of Negan, Daryl, Michonne, if any super fan to the extreme says they can do no wrong. Now, again, part of that is a projection where, yeah, they could do no wrong. I'll still love them, which if that's how you feel, say that because that's fine. I mean, I'm the same way with um, Negan. He can do no wrong. I love him because I love even the wrong he does. You know, like killing Abe, killing Glenn. I loved it. It was one of my favorite episodes. He, he can't be forgiven for that, though, as like a, you know, as a villain, but I loved it. But he can do no wrong, meaning I'm always going to love that character, most likely. Anyhow, um, it is hypocritical to say, yeah, these 
people, how dare they, how dare super fans to the extreme of the, these characters, how dare they feel that way, but I can sit here and feel this way uh, because I'm, I'm a female and it doesn't matter. That's, that's just hypocritical, I feel. Anyway, uh, thoughts and opinions about all this in the comment box down below, and I'll see you next time. That's it. Oh, no, I'm done talking, <laughs> so it's your turn. Oh, uh, whatever.